Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome to this video tutorial for the Cozy Cottage Socks. The Cozy Cottage Socks is my own design and it's a very simple uh, pair of socks crocheted in the knit stitch which is what gives it this knit look. They're made with a worsted weight yarn which means that it's a thicker pair of socks. So a great pair of socks to wear around the home or around the cottage when the, the floors are cold, which is uh, my favorite time to kind of wear them and use them. Today I will be crocheting them in a 100% wool, hand dyed wool by Fleece and Harmony. Uh, which is a shop. It's online. You can find them. I will link them in the notes for this video tutorial and uh, They have a lot of great colors and selection of 100% uh, Canadian made uh, Hand dyed fibers, so I will link that for you But this is the yarn. It's a worsted weight yarn and you will need about 200 and 50 to 300 yards of the worsted weight yarn. For this tutorial, you will also need a six millimeter crochet hook. You will need some stitch markers, at least three of them. You will need a measuring tape or a ruler. And of course, a pair of scissors and a yarn needle for finishing off your work. You will also need a copy of the crochet pattern. It is a free crochet pattern that's found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. And you can find it there. So for this tutorial, uh, I will be crocheting uh, the entire one entire sock for you. I'll be working in the smallest size. The pattern comes in three women's shoe sizes, uh, a size five and six, a size seven, eight, and a women's shoe size nine or ten. So today I will be working the woman's shoe size five uh, slash six. Now as we begin this tutorial, uh, just a couple of notes. In this tutorial, I am going to assume that you already have a basic understanding of crochet, such as how to make a slip knot, how to work a chain stitch, and a single crochet. Where the socks are knit in, uh, are crocheted in the knit stitch, I will show you and give you some tips and tricks on how to work that knit stitch. The stitch is also called the waistcoat stitch. And I believe there's a few other names for it as well, but today I will be calling it the Knit Stitch. And that is this KS uh, abbreviation here. It will be the Knit Stitch. So the first thing you're going to do is, for this pattern is you are going to make your slip knot. And you are going to, for women's shoe size 5 and 6, you're going to begin by chaining nine. Now various parts of the pattern are worked in rows while others are worked in rounds. So for the cuff it is worked in a row and so you will start by just simply chaining nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The cuff has a ribbed Texture that you can kind of see here and I'll show you how I do that technique. It's quite nice because it's quite quite stretchy and gives it again that knit look. So you've changed your nine. First thing you're going to do is in the second chain from your hook you're going to slip stitch. So simply insert your hook, pull up your loop, and then pull your loop through and you're going to slip stitch in each chain all the way across. So you will have eight slip stitches. And eight. And you're going to chain one and turn 
and working in the back loop only, you are going to uh, work another eight slip stitches across. So this is in the back loop only. If this is the top of my slip stitches, insert the hook under that back loop only. And that is where you will work your slip stitches. So slip stitch all the way across. like that. And then for the rest of the top portion of the cup, you are going to repeat that row. So you're going to chain one and turn. Working in the back loop only, you will slip stitch in each stitch across for a total. I will work here a few rows for you just so that you can see what the pattern is looking like. And you are simply going to repeat row um, row two here for until your cuff measures about six and a half inches for the smallest size. In the written crochet pattern, the adjustments are made for the size seven eight and the nine ten. So again, I've just chained one and turned. I'm slip stitching in the back loop only. I'll do one more row and then I'll just show you the ribbing that is coming through. Chain one, turn, slip stitch, in the back loop only, all the way across. And maybe I'll do one more chain one and then turn and slip stitch across. Now some people when they're working a ribbing they like to crochet with a single crochet or a half double crochet. I like the slip stitch ribbing. It kind of makes it a little bit more snug, uh, a little bit closer to a knit look uh, and it still has the great stretch. I'll just pause there so you can see it does work a little bit slower though than it would in a single crochet. So that is the ribbing coming along right there. So I'm going to work this and you're going to work this, uh, the slip stitching in rows until your cuff measures about six and a half inches. When you slightly stretch it, it will measure about eight and a half inches, but you're working towards six and a half inches. So I'll let you work on that and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so once you have worked about six and a half inches of your ribbed cuff, you are going to then join these two shorter ends together. How you're going to do that is you're going to fold your cuff in half so that you have the two ends together like that. You're going to simply chain one and then you're going to work through both thicknesses, working through the front loop of the side that's closest to you and through the back loop on the opposite side. And I'm going to slip stitch across eight slip stitches. So I'm going to pick up the front loop of this first side and the back loop of the stitch on the opposite side and I'm going to work one slip stitch. Then I'm going to do that again. So the front loop on the one closest to me, the back loop on the one furthest away, and I'm going to slip stitch. So do that in each stitch across and do not fasten off. And then the last 
stitch just like that okay then you're going to turn your work right side out you can see you have your seam here but it's not very noticeable and now for the rest of the uh, pattern it is going to be worked in rounds and it's going to work in continuous rounds, meaning that you are not going to join at the end of each round. Instead, you are going to mark it with a stitch marker, and you're going to move your stitch marker up as your work progresses. Okay. Now the first round, you are going to chain one, and you are going to quite loosely, so keep your tension quite loose, you are going to single crochet 25 single crochets evenly all the way around. <clears throat> okay, so chain one, and again, keep your tension quite loose. Okay, you want these stitches really loose for the next knit stitch, and you're going to single crochet 25 all the way around. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and one more for 25. So by the end of the 25, you should be back all the way around to the beginning. Now you are not going to join your work. What you are going to do is you are going to start working the knit stitch and you're going to work in continuous rounds and you're going to be marking your first uh, your first knit stitch of each round. Now the knit stitch it's a little bit tricky on the first row but the knit stitch is simply a single crochet that is worked not through the top two loops that you would normally work in, but it's worked through the center of the post of the single crochet below, or the knit stitch below. So this, you can see my first stitch right here. Normally I would work in this, uh, the top two loops here, but instead of doing that, I'm going to insert my hook, and it's best if you kind of do it on a little bit of a diagonal, and you're going to insert it through those two vertical posts on the single crochet. So insert it, work it on a little bit of a diagonal and go in much easier than trying to go straight through like this. And then you're just going to work a single crochet. Now on this first stitch, um, you're going to want to pull it a little bit tighter, closer together so that you don't have a hole there. And so when you complete the single crochet, you can see that it's come up like it like a knit stitch, like a, a stitch would look in knitting. So you're going to do that all the way around. Now after that first one you're going to take your stitch marker and you're going to just mark that first stitch so you'll always know where it is. And then you're going to knit stitch again in the next stitch. So you see your next single crochet here, you see your post down below, you're going to insert your hook through the center of that post through to the other side and complete your knit stitch. Again, you're gonna to wanna to try and keep all of your stitches fairly loose because you will be working through the center of them each time. So your next single crochet, this is the post. The two, you have the two vertical strands there. Insert your hook through the center of that post. 
pick up your yarn, pull through, and complete your stitch. And complete that all the way around. So you're going to have 25 knit stitches in this round. You can see why it was important to kind of keep those beginning stitches quite loose. It makes it much easier to work if they are loose to start with. And then continue to keep them loose all the way around. So you're working one knit stitch in each single crochet. The second row is much easier to see and it's okay if it takes you a few tries to uh, sort of get the hang of this knit stitch. It, is, it can be a little bit challenging. I find sometimes it helps to have a bit of a pointy tip on your crochet hook as opposed to a, a more dull one. And again, keep those stitches, your tension, uh, nice and loose, nice and relaxed. I will show you once I get all the way around, you'll be able to qu see quite well those knit stitches coming through as I get back around to my first. Now when you're working this part of the sock, remember that you will not be joining. You're just going to be working continuous rounds all the way around. Now I'm back at my first stitch there. So I'll take a moment and I'll show you so you can see the ribbing actually continues and then continues right down into your sock. Just like that. And so I'm going to remove my stitch marker, work my next stitch in that first one. I'm going to remember to place it back in again. You don't want to lose your first stitch so that way you can keep your rounds even. And I'm going to continue around working again, knit stitches all the way around. Almost all the way around. Just like so. And then I am back to my first stitch and you can see these knit stitches here. So you're going to continue working in rounds, working the knit stitch in rounds, and you're going to continue until you work from the very beginning, so from the very top of your cuff, uh, measures to be uh, four inches. Okay, so you're going to just work that knit stitch all the way around, continue working until it measures four inches. I'll let you continue that and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so we are now, I've now worked uh, the four inches of my cuff from start to, um, to uh, here where I am. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working the heel of the sock. So these socks, uh, they're more of just a slightly bit higher than an ankle sock. Uh, so I'm going to start working the heel of the sock. You could continue this portion of the sock if you wanted to make it longer for yourself. You would just need to remember to adjust the amount of yarn that you will need accordingly. So if you're making it shorter, you'll need a little bit less. But if you are making your sock quite uh, longer, you will need uh, more yarn than what I have specified in the instructions. So I am going to now start shaping the heel. And the heel is worked in rows. It is not worked in rounds. It is worked in rows. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to knit stitch in the first 13 
stitches. So here's my first. I'm just going to take out my stitch marker here. I'll put it back in. So here's the first stitch. There's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So I've worked thirteen knit stitches across. Then I'm going to turn and I'm going to leave, leave the remaining stitches unworked. So I'm going to turn and chain one and then working in the back I'm going to again knit stitch in each stitch across so my first stitch is going knit stitch is going to be worked in this one right here push your hook through the back so there's one two three four From now on, you probably won't need it for a little bit. Okay, so I've worked 13 uh, knit stitches across. Now for the next uh, five rows, I'm simply going to repeat row two. So I will have a total of seven rows of knit stitch. So that was row two. I'm going to chain one, work my uh, 13 knit stitches across. One. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now my final knit stitch when you're working it in the row is just worked um, just in your last uh, chain loop there. So 13. That was row 3, row 4, And then my turning chain. And then row five. Then chain one, row six.
chain and then my last row seven I had a break in my yarn. I'm just going to reattach it here. Now we continue on. I was kind of piecing two leftover balls of yarn together. There we go. And in my last one. There we go. So you can see this is the back of the heel here that is coming along our sock. So this is what it's going to look like up until this point. Okay, now in the pattern we are going to move on to the heel shaping. So when I designed this, I designed it the heel shaping similar to the uh, way you would work it if you were going to knit this sock. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to turn and you are not going to chain one, but you're going to knit stitch in the next nine stitches. So we have one, two, and that was my joining yarn, so it looks funny. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you are going to leave those remaining stitches unworked. You're going to then turn your work and you're going to knit stitch in the next in the first five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then again, you're going to leave those remaining stitches unworked and you are going to turn. Now what you're going to do is you are going to knit stitch in the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then you are going to work a decrease, which is a knit stitch two together. The first leg of your two together is going to be in that turning chain of your top row. So you're going to insert your hook and draw up your loop. And then the second one will be in this first stitch in the row below. So insert your hook, draw up your loop, as you would a single crochet two together, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Okay, and then you're going to knit stitch in the next stitch, just like that. And you, you're going to see that it's going to actually pull this forward. You're going to turn, you'll have a total of six stitches. Then you are going to knit stitch in the first five stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. You're going to knit stitch two together. So the first leg is in this turning chain. There's one, 
and your second is in this stitch on the row below. There's two knit stitch, yarn over, draw through all three, two together, and then knit stitch in the next stitch. Okay, then you're going to turn again. You're going to knit stitch in the uh, first six stitches. So your first one is here, there's one, and then two, three, four, five, six, then two together. The first will be in that chain two at the end, uh, the chain one at the end. So there's one, and then in the next row below, in the next stitch, there's two and you'll pull through, knit stitch two together, and then you'll knit stitch one more in that turning chain of this, that row, like that. Then you're going to turn, and you will knit stitch in the first seven stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Knit stitch two together, so my turning chain one, and the one down below in the next row is two. Knit those two together, and then place one final knit stitch in the last space, just like that. And then at this point, you will not turn your work. So if we take a look at our heel, you can see, and if I lay it flat here, you can see it a little bit better. You can see that it is starting to curve like it would for a foot. I'll turn it like that. So this is your heel coming right here. Okay, so we are now going to begin working the foot. We did not turn our work. And what we are going to do is we are going to work along the side of our heel here. And we are going to work six single crochet because we can't quite do any knit stitches here. You're going to work six single crochet down the side. If you would like, you can place a stitch marker there in your first stitch just so that you remember where it was. You're going to work six single crochet evenly down the side of your sock. So there's one. The outside is always facing you. So I'm just going to move those here because my yarn ball keeps hitting it. So there's one and two, three, four. Again, keep them loose. Five and six. I am then going to work a single crochet two together. One more kind of in the corner bottom of this heel and one more in the knit stitch on the next one uh, on the next uh, row below. Okay so it's just a single crochet kind of half knit stitch two together. Okay then I'm going to work uh, knit stitches all the way around. I'm going to knit my, uh, work my first one. Then I'm going to mark that stitch just like this. And then I'm going to work in the next eight. I have one, two, three, four. Six, seven, and eight. Then I'm going to work, uh, I'm going to place a stitch marker in that last stitch. And I'm going to work another single crochet slash knit stitch two together. There's one. The first one is in this next stitch. And then your second leg is just kind of in the corner here. 
of your heel and knit stitch two together. Then I've come to the opposite side of the heel, so I'm going to work another six single crochet evenly along one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to work um, uh, knit stitches here across the top and there's going to be six of them across the top to my next, my first stitch marker that I had put in. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so I've now, what I've done is I've just sort of created a foundation row all the way around my sock. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue working in rounds, but I'm going to decrease a little bit in each of these rounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually now at this point going to remove that first stitch marker. I don't need that one there anymore. And I'm going to work knit stitches all the way around until I get to that first stitch marker. Um, to actually the stitch before that stitch marker. Okay, so I'm working knit stitches all the way around to that single crochet two together that we had. That's the stitch before the marker. Then I'm going to work a another uh, knit stitch two together over those stitches. So I'm going to, for when I'm working a knit stitch two together over another knit stitch two together, you kind of just have to uh, put your hook through the center of that stitch as best you can. Okay, and you're going to pull up the first one, and then the second leg is going to be in that marked stitch. Just like that. And I'm going to complete it. Okay, and then you can place your stitch marker back in. And then I'm going to continue working around again. And I'm going to work uh, in each to the stitch marker right up to the stitch marker. And then when I reach that stitch marker, I am going to work one more single crochet two together or knit stitch two together. So there's one. And then through that other one there, there's two. Complete the stitch. I'm going to mark it again. And then I am going to do that again. I'm going to knit stitch all the way around to the stitch before my next marker. And so as you are working, you are decreasing your stitches by two each round that you make and you're going to want to continue that so continue repeating that decreasing round until uh, you have 25 stitches if you are working the smallest size you'll have 25 stitches remaining once you hit 25 stitches remaining, you'll move on to work uh, the rest of the foot. So I'll show you these decreases here one more time. 
I'm just knit stitching all the way around. Okay. Now I've come to the stitch before my stitch marker. I'm going to work one more knit stitch two together. Pick up my stitch marker. So the first leg and then the second leg. Like that. The yarn over pull through all three. Replace my stitch marker. Continue work to the next stitch marker. Okay. And then once I've reached my next stitch marker, I'm going to remove it. I'm going to work my next knit stitch two together through the previous one and then through the next one, pull through all three loops, remark that stitch and continue working all the way around one more time. Okay, so you'll continue doing that decrease round until you have 25 stitches remaining. Okay, so I've now worked my sock and it took about uh, three rounds. I've worked it down to 25 stitches all the way around. You can see here, you can see the sock forming there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply work the foot. And the foot is just continuous rounds of knit stitches. So 25 stitches per round. You're just going to work continuous rounds until your sock uh, measures from the heel about four and a half inches for the smallest size. Okay, so from the heel where you finished off the heel, you're going to work at uh, four and a half inches of knit stitches working just simply in the round. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take out um, that first stitch marker. You'll only need one stitch marker in here just to keep your rounds even and uh, work those rounds for four and a half inches of knit stitch all the way around the circumference of your foot. Okay, so I've now worked about four and a half inches of uh, foot for my sock and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start shaping the toe of my sock. So to shape the toe of your sock what you're going to do is you're going to take your sock and you're going to sort of push it flat on the floor with the sole of your sock uh, laying against the table. Just like this so you're going to put your foot down Put it down basically as you would your foot. And your one stitch marker should be almost um, pretty much in the right spot. Then what you're going to do is you're going to mark the other side of your foot with another stitch marker, just like this. And it is going to, uh, these stitch markers are going to mark where you're going to place your decrease stitches. And that way your decreases will always be in the same spots and it's going to shape the toe around uh, just like that, okay? So then once you have your stitches marked, one stitch on either side with the sole of the sock flat on the table, you are going to begin the decrease rounds. And you're going to start by where that stitch first stitch marker is, Place one knit stitch, just like that, and remark that stitch because that's your decrease by your decrease. And then you're going to knit stitch two together, knit stitch two together, and then you're going to knit stitch. And each stitch all the way to the next stitch marker. So 
So I'm simply knit stitch all the way around. To your next stitch marker and then once again you are going to knit stitch two together. So the first leg, second leg, pull through and then you can mark that stitch once again. Then you are going to continue working decreases just like that. So you will be decreasing by two stitches each time you're going to knit stitch to the next stitch marker That's one more knit stitch in there, replace your marker, and then knit stitch two together. One and two. Knit stitch to the next marker. this and knit stitch two together. One, two, pull through, mark that stitch. So you're going to continue working decrease rounds such as those until uh, you have 11 stitches remaining. So you will go from 23 stitches until you have 11 stitches remaining. So continue those decreases and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so once you have worked your toe until you have 11 stitches remaining, you're simply going to work one round of knit stitches all the way around. So 11 knit stitches for this smallest size. One, Three, four, five, six, eight, nine. And 11 and we are back at the beginning. Then what you are going to do is you are simply going to join with a slip stitch and fasten off your yarn. When you fasten off your yarn you are going to leave a long long tail because once you are done that you are going to turn your sock uh, inside out and you are going to simply take your needle and sew this toe seam closed. And once you have done that you can weave in all of your ends and you are finished. Congratulations! I hope that uh, this tutorial was helpful for you in working your pair of cozy uh, cottage socks and uh, as a reminder please check out the written pattern it is found for free on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel where I will continue to bring uh, some more great tutorials and uh, stitch tutorials and patterns to you thank you so much for joining me today to make this wonderful cozy 
sock. Happy crocheting!